All right, what's up guys? Jared Campisi back at the track today for another installment. I've been getting a lot of questions about 110 hurdles, 100 hurdles, and 110 hurdles. So today, I'm gonna explain to you how to run the race correctly, what you can do to increase your speed, increase your times, and uh, I'm gonna demo a workout along with Christina to reinforce what we're gonna talk about. As always, the full description of the workout will be in the description below, and let's get started. Okay, so when it comes to the 100 and 110 hurdles, they are a little bit unique because there isn't like a set race plan. There aren't really phases or anything like that. Um, this is one of the few races that um, just have a couple of parts to it that you need to understand, okay? The first one is you guys have to understand the 110 hurdles and the 100 meter hurdles, they are a sprint. It's basically a 100 meter dash, but with hurdles, okay? And I, I think sometimes people get so caught up in the fact that there's hurdles that they forget that you're supposed to be running as fast as you can, okay? So just keep that in mind. Sometimes it helps to take a day off from the hurdle practice and just go with the sprinters and because that's what you are you're a sprinter okay so you know go go with the sprinters and practice sprinting getting faster because if you can't run a hundred meter dash in under 12 seconds as a guy or under 14 seconds as a girl you're not gonna be that good of a hurdler because it's the same race except with hurdles so that's something you need to understand okay so when it comes to the race itself here's the first thing you need to do one learn how to use your blocks correctly it's such a short race. If you're not setting up your blocks correctly and getting out of them correctly, you're missing a pretty large part of the race. So I've got a video on how to use blocks, how and why to use blocks. I'll put it in the link in the description below. Be sure to check that out if you haven't. It'll help you learn how to use the blocks, explain why you're using the blocks, and show you how to use them correctly, okay? So when it comes to the 110 hurdles, and even the 100 meter hurdles, um, the first thing you need to understand is, one, your drive phase. It's like a mini drive phase to the first hurdle, okay? Normally, if you see my 100 meter dash video, you drive out of the blocks for like up to 20 to 30 meters before you come upright. In the 100 hurdles, we need to be upright be before, way before that, like within like five steps basically. Because if you're in a position down here where you're still driving and you get to the hurdle like this, look where my hips are your hips should be up here, okay? So that's whenever you get into that jumping up over the hurdle and then you come down off the other side and collapse. That's why that happens, okay? So you need to get out of the blocks, take a couple of steps and get upright and ready to hurdle, okay? So that's the first thing you need to understand. Second thing is you have to get your steps to the first hurdle correct. It, it has to be an all out sprint and what I normally do is I just push over the first hurdle for people and have them go out of the blocks as hard as they can and see where their steps come up. So you should, for like world-class hurdlers, it's about seven steps. I think I took eight or seven, some, somewhere around there, um, and then eight or nine or 10, depending on your level of sprinting ability, basically. So what that means is I'm a left-legged hurdler, so I wanna hit all those hurdles on my left leg, right, if I'm three-stepping. So I have to put my feet in the blocks and go out as hard as I can so that I'm hitting my right foot in a good distance to take that first hurdle, okay? And the first hurdle is pretty much the most important hurdle because if you can't carry all your speed into that first hurdle, then you're gonna be behind in the race and the whole time you're gonna be trying to catch up, okay? So that's just not an efficient way to run it. It's not the way that you're gonna run your best times, okay? So one thing you need to learn how to do as a hurdler is use either foot in the blocks, like either way in the blocks, because if you come up full speed and you're coming up on the wrong foot, a really easy way to fix it is to just switch your front foot in the blocks, okay? So that's a really easy way to get your steps right. Sometimes your steps just aren't gonna be right, so you have to adjust. Maybe you have to take a little bit smaller steps or you have, you don't wanna be bounding. So I would say take smaller steps if you need to, or maybe even back off a little bit on the intensity so that you hit that first hurdle correctly and you're building into speed instead of chopping and, and killing your speed into the hurdle, okay? So that's the first thing, get your start sorted, get your steps to the first hurdle sorted. Once that's sorted, there's really only two ways you get better in the race. You run faster between the hurdles, or you get off of the hurdle quicker. So snapping over the hurdle quicker. There are helicopters flying by while I'm trying to do it. Dude, I'm trying to do a video right now. Do you even mind at all? Holy shit. Anyway, so like I said, two ways to get better in the race. You're either 
snapping over the hurdle faster, getting up back down to the ground. That's where we want to be. We want to be on the ground as quickly as possible. When you're when you're over the hurdle, there's nothing that's happening there. You're just hanging in the air, okay? So you want to get up and over that hurdle and back down to the ground as quickly as possible so that you can continue to sprint again, okay? If you watch the good hurdlers, the best ones, it's usually the guy that's getting back to the ground the soonest is the guy that's winning the race, okay? So that's what you need to learn how to do. So basically that's it. Getting your steps sorted out, getting learning to be more efficient over the hurdle, get back to the ground faster, and then realizing the race is a sprint. So getting back on the ground and sprinting between the hurdles, okay? But making sure you're keeping your hips up, it'll make it a lot easier as you go over the hurdles, okay? You can get into a lot more technicalities when it comes to the 110 hurdles, but that's something I'd have to be there in person to watch what you're doing. So this is kind of a general overview of how to run the race correctly and how you can, like, kind of just get your mind right and sort out good times, okay? So what we're gonna do now is he's Christina and back. I are gonna, he's coming back? <laughs> Why? He's Why is he coming, coming back? back. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually demo a workout for you guys that reinforces this. The first three hurdles are pretty much the most important ones, okay? So um, what it's gonna be is it's gonna be some five-step drills just to make sure we're warmed up and I'll show you what five-step is. If you haven't done it before, it's a wonderful exercise for getting warmed up for the 110 hurdles. And then we'll be, we're gonna be going over the first three hurdles, okay? So what we'll probably do is do like two over the first hurdle, two over the first two hurdles and then two over the first three hurdles okay and we'll take five minutes for five minutes rest in between if you have blocks use them if you have other people on your team that are running the 110 hurdles or the 100 hurdles go out with people okay so it simulates the race have somebody start you guys and go out of the blocks and that's how you sort it out okay unless you're trying to sort out your steps to the first hurdle in which case have somebody stop and watch you and do it that individually okay but once you got that stuff sorted out this is that's what you have to do is just run reps and run reps and run reps and get those that that timing down, the pacing down, the snapping over the hurdle, get all that stuff sorted out so that you can run your fastest times. Um, I was able to run, I think I ran 14 flat or 14-2 in high school and I was able to win states in the uh, 110 hurdles as a senior. And um, I wasn't really that great of a hurdler, but I was fast and I just powered through that race. It's a, it's a man's race, dude. So um, yeah, those are the tips that help me run fast times. and. Um, if you do it correctly, it can help you as well. So why don't we get into the workout and let's get started. Okay, so we just went through and warmed up. As always, the warm up that I used to do is in the description below. Make sure you warm up properly before you're doing like hardcore sprinting stuff. So what we're gonna do first before we get into the actual workout is do some five step drill. And basically all we're doing is we're taking uh, three hurdles. You can put three to four, even five if you want on the 110 marks for the, for the guys. Um, and we're just gonna go over uh, two times with my lead leg, just lead leg off on the side, two times with my trail leg off on the side, and then two times over the top, okay? And we're taking five steps in between the hurdles instead of three like in a race. So it's a jogging pace where you can really work on perfect form, driving up with those bent levers, coming off the hurdle quickly, and, uh, and um, you know, bringing the trail leg around nice and high and tight and snapping it down, okay? So here we go. So when you're doing five step drill, you saw me just doing my trail leg, which means I'm off to the side, my trail legs, or I'm sorry, just doing my lead leg, which means my trail legs off to the side, it's not actually going over anything. Make sure you're still using it so you don't get in bad habits, okay? Just like now I'm gonna do my trail leg, the first thing I do is use my lead leg like I'm going over something even though there's nothing there. So make sure that you guys do that correctly, okay? So here's trail leg. Okay, so now I'm warmed up, kind of, and ready to go. I'm gonna keep them at the intermediate height because I haven't gone over high school highs in 15 years or something ridiculous, and I don't wanna bust my ass so I can keep making videos for you guys. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, since I don't remember what my steps are to the first hurdle, is I'll show you guys so you can see how I do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just push the first hurdle down, and I'm gonna go from the starting block. I don't have blocks, so I'll just go from the starting position. And I'm gonna run through, and Christina's gonna count my steps for me and tell me um, 
or will look back at the video and tell me where my steps were. So if I, if I hit it on my left leg, which is not the leg I want, then I'll just know I need to switch my, my feet in the blocks. And if I hit it on my right leg, then I know I'm good. So I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, ready? Yep. So we watched the video back. I hit eight on my left leg, which is not my takeoff leg. So now I just need to switch my feet in the blocks in order to hit eight on my right leg. So hopefully this one will be correct. Then we'll put the hurdle on. Okay, so after I got my steps right to the first hurdle, we're getting into the workout now. So what it's gonna be is two over the first hurdle, just the first hurdle, then two times over two hurdles, and then two times over three hurdles, okay? So that's what the workout is. Driving out of the blocks, hitting that first hurdle nice and smooth, and then getting back to the ground as quickly as possible and sprinting in between the hurdles, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing. If you have blocks, use them. If you have other people, start together simulate the race and take two to three minutes between between reps and that's it okay so let's do next All right, so I just watched the tape back and I actually felt it when I was running. I, I didn't generate enough speed to the first hurdle, so I was kind of bounding a little bit. It almost looked like I was slowing down running into the second hurdle, so um, I just gotta make sure I hold my speed in that first hurdle and come off with some aggression attacking into the hurdle, okay? So that I'm able to hit my steps and run between the hurdles instead of bound between the hurdles. So let's try three and see how that goes. So I was having trouble making my steps. So I took a little extra rest there, five minutes, calmed down a little bit. And then I was able to hit my steps. If you saw that last one, I just watched back the tape. Looked pretty good, still bounding a little bit too much. But, uh, and I also noticed my trail leg is hanging a little bit. I'm not snapping it around and getting back to the ground. And that's probably because I know I, I need to float a little bit to give me a little extra space to make my steps just because I'm tired. I haven't been hurdling. I weigh 20 pounds too much for it. <laughs> so uh, overall, Felt pretty good. Let's watch your scene. Okay, so now I'm gonna do what Jerry did. I'm gonna go two over the first one, two over the second one, and two over the third one. Um, I'm a four stepper, so my dominant is my left, just like Jarrett's, but I have to alternate. If I try to three step, then I bound and I end up losing time. So when I four step, I can hit low 16, so that works for me. So if you can four step, then do it. Just get faster between the hurdles. There's no point to bound, lose time, and then get a second time. So let's see how I do. Okay, so there you go guys. That's a little overview of how you can run faster in the 110 hurdles from getting your steps right at the start to getting faster over top of the hurdle and then hitting your uh, three step and getting faster on your three step, okay? Don't forget to 
do sprinting workouts as a 110 hurdler. Don't get caught up in hurdle land all the time. You gotta go and hop in with the sprinters because if you're not able to sprint, you're not gonna do well in the race, okay? So don't forget that fact, guys, okay? So, there's a little bit for you guys, a little workout that will help you reinforce. That's something we would do in our tech days, so a Tuesday, Thursday kind of thing, and then our workouts will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So that's a tech day workout you guys can do. You don't have to do that much volume, but you can just go over a couple times, whatever works for you. You know, go how your body feels. If you're getting tired, don't keep beating the dead horse and keep slamming the hurdles and stuff like that. So, I hope that was helpful for you guys, all you 110 hurdlers out there, and 100 hurdlers. It was nice to see Christina show you that you can still be good as a four-stepper as well, so don't you know, be crazy about thinking you need to be a three-stepper. You can still do well as a four-stepper also, okay? So I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you liked it, as always, hit that thumbs up button. That helps us out. And be sure to subscribe for more videos and leave comments below if you have other questions. Tell me what videos you want to see and I will make it happen. So until next time, guys, catch you in the next one. It's crazy sometimes thinking you can own a piece of the world. It's just floating through